That's a good evening to everyone. We're just going to give everyone a chance to have their final viewings. We want to have more, more song service where we can at this time give some praise. Even in a moment like this, we're going to do that. So as we come in, we'll be leading right into our song service. So please join us very shortly as we begin our song service. Just after we become friendly. Please stand. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, today, dear Lord, we invite you into our presence. We understand, dear God, that even moments like these do not want you, but they need you now more than ever. Allow your Holy Spirit to be with us, that all which is said and done will bring honor and glory to your name. Is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Everyone say, Amen. Amen.
peace is given to all who believe. Sweet promise is
best friend to have must be Jesus. Amen. Why? A friend that can stick even closer than ever. Yes. And it's a friend who will be there with you in good times as well as bad times. Yes. I want to show the family but today because he's still Emmanuel, God is with your family. Amen. So I use this opportunity to welcome you. You will see along. Side the welcome remarks there, Pastor Alan Tull. I'm not Pastor Alan Tull, I'm Pastor Bax. <laughs> We're just trying to correct the program. He met me in St. Joseph's, so that is welcome to St. Joseph's. <laughs> welcome. And as I would always say, it's good to be born Dominican. It's better to be a Dominic, yes. but best of all to be from St. Joseph. Yes. I'm from St. Joseph, so yes. welcome to our funeral service this afternoon and for our dear sister, Sister Louie. And since I got to know Sister Louie, she's been such a warm lady walking down the streets there. And somebody would say it's a, a loss in the day. Lost to St. Joseph, but when you die, the Lord is not a loss again. It's a plus for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why it pays to live for Jesus. So that when you die, one day you will live again. And so I welcome you to the service today and I pray that before this service, you conclude that each person present here. We surrender fully to Christ. That's my prayer, that's my heart desire. So that one day when Jesus will come again in glory, when he shall burst the clouds of heaven, we will be reunited. I want to be there. What about you? Yeah. Obviously, finally, whenever we have our parliamentary representative in the house, a young man, Honorable, <coughs> Honorable uh, Darren Lloyd. You must recognize the sign that you see, young man. <laughs> Very good. Amen. You can understand why I'm from St. Joseph, so I will watch him grow up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I will watch him grow up. Nice having you here today, and may God bless you. All the other dignitaries, nice having you, and all the other members of the community, welcome as we worship God. We will continue with your worship. We do. Him 432 shall be gather at the river. And two things we will remain standing until the next three items. And the rest of the program will go unannounced. The individuals will come up and do their part as we praise and worship God. Shall we gather at the river? Shall we gather at the
it's been tough, but I'm like, I kept it together because, you know, I thought I'm you know, kind of strong sometimes. But, you know, I carried her you know, from the car to the bed. I was good. When I stepped and you know, walked away, it just hit me like, that's what's really happening, you know? So, but then um, I was just, you know, thinking, actually wrote on Facebook that my parents were born in September, and they both died in March. Yeah. So, um, and then the last time I, I stood up here was to do, you know, sit with my dad, and you can see my mom sitting like here, and she's looking at me. And in my mind, it may sound crazy, but it's like I was very happy. Because I just saw the sadness, and, and like from that day, honestly, I never really saw my mom happy. Like that took a toll on her. And like you never, you would tell, you know, somebody, you know, we can get over it, whatever, but you never know like, what's going on inside of someone. And it took a toll, and you know, we saw pretty much deteriorate that, you know. And even, you know, knowing that she's there, like nothing for me is harder than calling your mom. And she don't know who you are. Who you are. It's like she didn't know me, and that thing like, killed me, man. Yes. But you know, it's like. But so I'm just gonna try to just tell you a little bit about my mom. Like even you know, growing up, you know, my parents, then you know, Kimo, Kelvin, Mikey, Alvin, showing you know, just the whole. You probably be you know by the, the bathroom, and they were like, "Larry." Goes your mom, and I would already see her, yes. and she had that look. It's like three looks, like you know, a smile. I know okay, I'm good. She kind of like, I feel she's disappointed. I do something that I didn't do, and I just like, oh, is she serious? I know, okay, I gotta go home. So it would be called with no communication. I know exactly what she was thinking. So we had that, definitely we had that bond, and. I remember, you know, straight away from you know church a little bit, not too much, but <laughs> so I'm in the village and one of my so a guy that was really like, Matthew, you think Larry is the same guy, you know, you knew and whatever, you know, he's changed and he's doing it. I like she and my father called me in, you know, in the room and I like, just see the disappointment in the face. I'm like, man. So that kept, that's one thing that always kept me going. Like, I never to be a disappointment to my parents. So I always tried my best to just, you know, make them proud in whatever way I can. It didn't always work. You know, we do my super don't fail, but you know. But I try my best at my siblings, you know, we we try our best. And just you know, publicly I wanna just Thank you know everyone who had had to play you know in being there for my mom, the press, you know, business, whatever for my siblings, my brother, my sister. I want to publicly thank you guys like so 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 much for just you know, you know me not being here and everything that you guys did. You know we all created for different purposes and I know that probably wasn't mine because the stomach you guys have, and like, I'm like, man, that's not me, but God had me, you know, use me in different, different capacity. And especially my sister, you know, I called and then I could just feel, like, feel your pain, like, why you're going through, you know, one thing, one to be okay, and it's not happening, but you stood there by, you know, not just mom, but daddy, and you, you've been a constant source of strength and support, a caretaker, you, know, you did everything that you could for them, and I just, I just thank you for that. You know, um, like my couple of, couple of things, but she would call my mother call me like every April 5th, which is my birthday, just two days from now. And she would relive that moment that I was born and tell me over the entire thing. The time, what happened, what the doctor said, like just over and over. The past few years, you know, when she was going down, that kind of stopped those okay. things. But like I miss those things and I will miss it in a couple of days. And one thing she always tells me is, I see a man's goal, I have none.
All I can give you is Jesus. Amen. And you know, she tell me, you know, I just wake up in the middle of the night and just remember you and just pray and pray. Amen. And now I'm saying, I hope she has some prayers on their way. Amen. So I can go and just tap into it whenever I need strength. Amen. And God will, you know, continue the blessing. So again, I just pray for strength and comfort for my family. Why my son was here with me, my brother, sister, uncles, and just an, oh, another thing I want to recognize now. And tell you that she couldn't make it today. I know, you know, she really wished she could, but that wasn't a possibility. So I just ask for prayer and comfort for all. So thank you so much. Amen. Amen.
The only thing mom never tried to do is to preach in church. <laughs> maybe she, that one, maybe she would not be able to do it. But whatever I asked her, she was forefront. She would do it with all of her heart. And I can tell you, I will miss her. And I love me alone. I know this. Married with my family. We will miss her. But in 2023, 2021, she got the stroke. And we stay in we fight it out. And I don't know what conversation she and my daddy had. Because my dad was sick in 2017. He fell sick in February 2017. He died in March 2018. She said fell sick in February 2021. Died in March 2023. I don't know what conversation they had. <laughs> both died on the Sabbath day. They like their food, they like lunch time. Mm. <laughs> they like their food because she ate before she died. So <clears throat> I don't know. What was this what was this scenario? There was so much in love that they maybe had it before. <laughs> but so anyway, that wasn't too bad thing. All we have to do is just keep holding on to the Lord. Because they did it and that's what she was always asking for and praying for. That we keep close to each other. So then she left behind. She so left me in the pride and joy. She had Joni, what a lovely girl, Johnny, and she had, like what this, you can testify that, that basket of flowers, that's Larry, that's how she'll call it. And he was my basket of flowers, up to now he is. So he's not just one alone, up to now he's my basket of flowers. And she did not bear so many children, my dad wanted a lot to know, but she said no, three. So she had three of us. But we gave her seven grandchildren. Amen. So we multiplied it four. And yet, I'm standing, I'm a grandma. So my son gave her a great grand. And then we are, God is able. She left her siblings, her four sisters, and her three, bro her three brothers. I'm asking that we all stay together. Because mom is not there, dad is not there. I'm even asking the church, don't forget us. I know that you are always there, always there. So keep praying for us, keep remembering us. Don't leave us alone. There is a song that says, you only miss, you only uh, miss the sun when it starts to snow, and you only let her go when you love us. When you love her, we don't love mom to let her go. But there is no choice. We just hope that to see her in the next resurrection. Just before we have a special item of music, I've just given the opportunity to introduce to you the individual who will be speaking to, the, to us today. On the platform, we have three ministers of religion. Two of us were not born in the island of Dominica. <laughs> so though he may say that he is from St. Joseph, I am, I am Dominican by social security card. <laughs> but we have to speak to us today by the, by the immediate supervisor. He is the ministerial secretary of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He is also my immediate predecessor in the Central District. I do not only consider him a supervisor, but I see him as a mentor, someone who loves his community, and one who, whom I've seen to know that his community also loves him. I, I speak of none other than Pastor Maurice Morancy, and after the special item of music, they should be given by Kersaran. I know that Lord, the Lord will indeed use Pastor Morancy to bring a word to all of our hearts and give it to the Father. Amen. After this special music, the next verse you will hear is Pastor Morancy. Amen. Good afternoon to all. Hi. I hope to bless you with my goodness. Amen. Amen. 
cry out your storm, the sheep has lost anchor, and the storm got you drifting. Just hold on to whom? Come on now. Just hold on to whom? Just hold on to Jesus. And what do you do? Thank you so much. So appropriate as we seek to understand what God is saying to us this afternoon at this service. I take time to acknowledge the elementary representative for the area. Welcome. And God bless you. We have the health director for the East Caribbean Conference in the person of Sister Priscilla Crivo and also the actual director and she has become a household name. Welcome. See one of our principals there for the school. That's Western District Primary School. So Mills. Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Thank you for the use of the pulpit, Pastor. And to the family members, trust that God would be with you even now as He has promised. Promise to hold you, promise to walk with you in this difficult time. They tell me that love does. Amazing things. Yeah? Yeah. Love does amazing things. I don't know what conversation <laughs> they had. I remember speaking at the death of the husband. That's what he said. You spoke at the death of the husband, so you have to speak at the death of one another. And now I'm hearing that they had a conversation that they decided they must die in the month of March. Hmm? And not just on the month of March, it has to be a Sabbath. And somehow in their conversation, they must have said, Well, let us eat first. <laughs> Life is just amazing. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Father, speak to our hearts, we pray. Please, please, Lord, use us for your glory. And that even in the presence of death, we can see you as the giver of life. Move among us, we pray. May we understand, Lord, that the life that you have promised to us is and has to be the best life we can ever live. And so, Lord, may your words enlighten us and as the people draw closer, draw us closer to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 On behalf of the administrators, I simply want to extend our deepest sympathy to the family members in, in these difficult, difficult times. You know, if we had Barbados in Dominica, then the administrators would be present. But since that is not possible, then you have right there, we have students there and I'm there and we certainly extend you know that comfort that is so near in this difficult time. God bless the family, God keep you all together, keep you all trusting when hope is of God. Amen? Amen. Are we together everybody? Yes. All right. When hope overflows it's, it is amazing yet true 
know that your way of life can change in a moment. In a moment, your life can change. Your situation can change. Today you are healthy and tomorrow you are sick. And it seems to me here that life keeps on changing and so our emotions. Today we are surrounded with sadness, uh, the loss of a mother, the loss of a friend, uh, the loss of a, a, a wife. We are here today uh, committing a body to the ground just a few hours or minutes from now. But when the year started, we had no idea that we'll be here today. Life, as we know it, is uncertain. Life comes with its mixed portion out together. We are here today and we are gone when? We are faced with challenges, we, we are tried and we are tested, we, we laugh at times and we cry at times and life, life, life comes with the roses and, and the thorns and the disappointments and the appointments and, and, and somehow life comes with pains and pleasure, celebrations and also the house of mourning. Sometimes we, we lose hope. We lose hope sometimes. And sometimes we, we just do not know how to cope, family members. Sometimes we, we feel that the Lord is too heavy. And crying becomes the only con con consolation that we know. May I say this to somebody here this afternoon that, that I believe. But you believe with all of your heart that, that, that God is still God. Even when we are unable to understand His working, He is still God. He is still God when the sun shines and when the rain falls. Am I talking true? He is still God when we are sick and when we are at our best as it relates to our health. God is still God. God's nature is, is unchangeable. And I believe that circumstances cannot change God. God is God by himself. And he is the source of life. He is the source of light. And without a doubt, we, he is trustworthy. And his promises are true. Am I making sense? Follow me here. God is unchangeable. God is still immovable. God is still unshakable. The universe cannot contain God, yet God is so small that he can dwell in your heart. So much has been said on sisterly Roman. Those of you who heard woman that she was, love her children, work hard, bake bread, hello. Mm. And uh, those of us who are children, you know when mommy is baking bread, you want to eat all the hot bread, is that so? But mommy says, no, we cannot eat all we got to share it with the community and you are not happy about it but you have to go with it because mommy understands the bigger picture we are not living for ourselves but we got to assist each other what a woman we love God and love the church that she served a matter of fact let me tell you something about the church that she served and, uh, some persons go to church as just not eating tea but it's more than that. We believe that to be a Seventh-day Adventist is a lifestyle. Yes. Yes. It's a lifestyle. It impacts your entire life. Am I talking to yes. you? Yes. 
We believe in the word of God, sola scriptura. And if the Bible does not say it, then we do not believe it. We believe that there is one God. We believe in the Trinity. Three co-eternal per uh, persons working for your salvation and my salvation. We believe in creation, that we are not monkeys, we came from the hand of God. How together? We believe that there is a battle. The devil is rapidly working to get you. Christ says no, and there is a constant battle. We call it the controversy, the great controversy. It's for you, your life. And you decide where you stand. She embraced the life and death and the resurrection of Jesus. She embraced uh, the church as the remnant church of the living God. God's special people for these last days. She believed. She believed in baptism by immersion. She believed. She believed that her body belongs to God. She believed that Jesus Christ will come and he must come because he has promised to come. Somebody say amen. She believed and she died believing in her maker. I choose to mention this because it's important as it relates to the life of the person that we are talking about. But permit me here to tell you that even when family members, it, it's difficult and it is hard and you can't prevent the tears from flowing. And even if you try, it's still coming down and the memories of money, the memories of money, those days, those days. That you just can't let go. I want you to understand that God still speaks. He speaks. He speaks even in all weaknesses. God speaks. He speaks when life has become helpless and it seems like somebody is it, it's hopeless. God speaks even when we are in grief and pain and we can't understand why now? Why much? Why now? We can't understand. God speaks our way together. God speaks and sometimes we expect God to speak, to speak with a low voice. Sometimes we expect God to speak by healing and by touching and somehow performing miraculous acts. But sometimes God, God speaks in a still small voice. Are we together? Elijah understands this very well. A matter of fact, if you know the story of Elijah, you will understand that Elijah, a man of God, had his highs and he had his low. Am I talking true? Elijah, Elijah finds himself in a valley like somebody here today. You are in a valley and it's like you can't get out. It's painful, it's hard, it's difficult. And somehow the gaze of light is fading. Somebody is like Elijah. Maybe he's afraid. Maybe he's running for uh, his or her life. Elijah is running for his life. He's hungry. And he's thirsty. He's tired. I'm talking to somebody here. He feels all alone. He feels helpless. He feels powerless. And the God that he believes is a champion. Uh, somehow he feels alone. He feels separated. I'm talking to family members. You feel separated sometimes. You wonder where God is, Lord. Where are you in my situation? But I've come by to tell somebody that God still speaks. And he speaks. Sometimes in a still small voice. In the words of a preacher. In the life of a member. He speaks, he speaks, he speaks. God speaks. My friends, our text. May the God of hope feel you. It's a blessing that Paul is pouring on the church. It's a blessing and it's also a prayer. May the God of hope, not just any God, but he says here, the God that he's talking about is the God of, come on now, tell the person next to you, the God of hope. The text says in Romans 15 and verse 13, may the God of hope 
fills you with all joy uh, and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the church say amen. Paul identifies God as the God of hope. The God that can change situations. The God that can bring to light that would seem to be all in darkness. God of hope, he says. The God of hope. The God of hope, we must understand, knows how to take you out of the mess. Hello, somebody talk to me. God is still in the business of taking people from the gutter, out we together, in the mess, clear them up, transform their lives, and set them as trophies for his kingdom. The God of hope. And when man may see you as hopeless, and man may trample on you because of his educational status, or the money that he has in the bank account, and the house that he possesses, and the car that he drives, we must understand as a people that God of hope sees you. He sees you, a child of the king, a child of the king, full of potential. Am I talking to somebody here? Someone who can achieve and can do great things because of his power. What a God we serve. The God of hope, he says, then what will the God of hope do? He says here, yeah, the God of hope will, 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 will fill you with all joy. Now, that seems hard to understand. But here we are in this setting. But yet the Lord is saying to us and to the family that the God of hope fills you with all joy and all peace as you do what? Trust Him. Are we together? Trust Him. Trust who? Trust God, the God of hope so that you may do what? Not just have hope, but the Bible says to overflow with what? This is what I'm talking about. Oh boy, that little cock will see that you have, and you have this little cup, and somebody's pouring, and someone's in their bag, and it thinks that's overflowing. What is it that God wants you to have to the overflow? My friends, the Bible says here that God of hope, God, God, the Creator, your Creator, my Creator, the one who loves me and loves you, will feel you, will feel, and has filled the sister we fill her with joy and peace. No, 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 no. If God is able to fill you with joy and fill you with peace, then why are you complaining so much? Why are you worry so much? But here in the text, what God is able to do to a child of his, and that is to fill him with joy and fill him with peace as he trusts him and so that he can or she can overflow with hope, hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm told that joy, I'm pulling this here together, I'm going to go a little quicker here, I got to end that, I got to end that. The word joy somehow means to, to, to be exceedingly glad. To be exceedingly glad. Not just glad, but to be exceedingly glad. The word peace, the word peace talks about completeness. It talks about wholeness. It talks about wellness. What is the Bible saying? Biblical joy, I'm told by definition, is this. But maybe here to quote, uh, biblical joy is choosing to respond, choosing to respond to external circumstances with inner commitment. Uh, how do you respond to the external circumstances of your life? How do you respond? Do you blame God? How do you respond? Do you turn your back on God? How do you respond? Say this is enough for me as it relates to life and 
some are contemplating committing suicide. How do you deal with the external circumstances? The Bible says here, the child of God will do it differently. I try, I try sometimes to understand that what would bring so much joy to a child of God on the deathbed when everybody around is crying. I've seen that sometimes they become those that encourage us to trust God. To trust God. Going beyond the external. Going beyond the food that you can provide for yourself. Going beyond the problems at home. What takes the joy in? You can still trust Jesus. Am I talking truth? You can still kneel down and pray. Am I speaking truth? That when your neighbor sees you, you say, hey, uh, it's more than a feeling. But I've come to understand that that joy and that peace that the Bible is talking about is centered. It's all about a person. It's about a person. It's about Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus Christ is in the life, then joy comes out. Are we together? Peace comes out even in a land where we are worrying about money and bills. It's because of Jesus and the Apostle Paul says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of our God can be seen. What a God we serve. Am I talking to you here this evening? Amen. And so the Bible says, quickly here, Oh, brethren, family members, come to the joy when you fall in various temptations. Hmm? Joy is what we do and how we act when we are experiencing God's presence in our lives. Are we together? Joy. And what better story I can share with you of this man that was somehow by this temple called Beautiful, and he was unable to see right, he was unable to, to walk, he was unable to walk, and, and he was there begging every day. How best can I tell you about this? He is there begging, but somehow the disciples passed Peter, and, and he, 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 the guy looked at Peter, Peter must have looked at him, and he, 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 he somehow saw Peter maybe wearing a jacket. And there are some things about wearing a jacket, you think they have money, they don't have nothing. <laughs> Can you help me please? Can you satisfy my needs? But Peter looked at, at, at this lame man, this crippled man, and he said, he said, like sister, we silver and gold. <laughs> silver and gold. Silver and gold have I on. But such as I have what? I can give. What can I give? I can give Jesus. Why can I give Jesus? I can give Jesus because with Jesus all things are possible. For with Jesus, he can calm your storms. With Jesus, he can say, peace, be still. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus can calm your storm. So silver and gold, many of us do not have. But what we have can put a joy in our hearts. What we have can give us peace. Peace in the midst of the storm. Peace. Sometimes we allow our eyes to see circumstances. I'm closing. Sometimes we allow ourselves to be distracted by the externals. How together? And like the disciples, we cry out, Master, Master, care us not that we perish. Thanks be to God. Jesus rose and Jesus declared to the winds and, and to the waves and peace what? Peace be still. And these disciples were so amazed, amazed that even the wind and the wind obey him. I present to you the one that can put joy back in your life, the one that can give you peace in this troubled world. Jesus, how together? What a friend the song says we have with whom? In Jesus. All of us. What a privilege! Everything. 
to God in prayer. So my friends, the infeeling of joy in your life, the infeeling of peace in your life comes as a result of knowing Christ and allowing Christ to dwell in your heart. And when Christ dwells in your heart and you are filled with joy and you are filled with peace, then you will overflow with what? <laughs> you will overflow with what? Hope. Oh, I want to overflow today. What about you? I present to you just two little quick points. One, when hope overflows, we rest in God's keep of the hands. When hope overflows, we rest in God's keep of the hands. Have been, or rather, has not been Isaiah who declared that when God passes through the water, I will be with you. And when thou uh, passes through the river, they shall not overflow thee. And when you walk through the fire, you will do what? It, you shall not be burned. What is so powerful about this text is this, that there are moments in your life when you will walk through water. There are moments in your life when you got to go through the fire. There are moments when you will have to go through death and walk through the valley of death. But we understand the power of God and what he can do in our lives. So you can walk through the valley of death and still sing. You can walk through the valley of death and still have hope. That one day, all these troubles and all these trials will be over things of the past. Somebody say, hey, man, what a wonderful God we serve. When hope overflows, we live in assurance. We live in assurance when hope overflows. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of mine, the Bible keeps on saying over and over and over again that, 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 that Jesus Christ will come. And he will come to put an end to sin, an end to suffering. Am I talking the truth? Job says, you know, though he said me. Mm. Oh, I will hope in him. I will still have hope. It doesn't matter what the devil tries. Hello. I say it doesn't matter what the devil tries. The Christian who is overflowing with hope will never give up. But will continue to trust the living God. Am I talking to you? Somebody here will continue to trust God. Somebody here will continue to do what is right. Somebody here, in spite of what is being said, would have made up and will make a piece of the mind to trust God. We need trust God today. I want to trust Him. I want to overflow with hope. Because somehow that hope goes beyond just today. That hope goes beyond tomorrow. That hope somehow moves past the grave. That hope somehow sees a resurrection morning. When Jesus Christ will call, he simply says, And come forth, sister Louis. Come forth, uh, Father Louis. And together, together, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know how it's going to be, but I understand that God of hope, the God that can turn nothing and create something out of it, God is going to do it. I believe it. I trust God's word. We are here today because of the creative power of God. And if he speaks it, it will happen. What a God we serve. So family members, trust God. Louis, the two men of the house, one with my name. Keep on holding on. Family members, sister, keep on trusting. Going through death is a difficult path, you know. But what makes you sing and what gives you peace is the presence of God. And so may you as family members overflow with hope. Paul calls it the blessed hope. He says it's the God of hope that will give you hope to the overflow. And that you can look forward to a brighter day, family members. I'm talking to girls I'm not hearing. But God can do it for you. Memories will remain. 
But rest assured that God's words are true and faithful. And to the child of God who lives for him and who dies in him, will one day be resurrected in him. God bless you. Provided a hug, displayed a smile, 
sat with a member of the family, prepared a dish, gave a love offering, or extended a fist bump, or offered up a word of prayer. It was much appreciated. I won't stand here and start calling name for name as to help, who helped us in a mighty special way because we will miss our return flight to America. <laughs> However, I would like to take this opportunity to say a special thank you to Pastor Tall for sharing your pulpit with us today. Thank you, Pastor Moranzi, for delivering that message. Gentle rest for all that you did. I'm Annie Lane for making room for Mama. We appreciate that. Amen. The volunteers at the community center, we thank you. Claudia and Auntie for making it possible for those that were unable to be here in person so that they can watch it live. Amen. Thank you to all of you who are here today. And for those of you that was here on Thursday, we appreciate that as well. <laughs> thank you, Johnny and Larry, for not just saying, but for showing love and for allowing God to use you to provide it for Mama while she was here. Extra special thank you to my sister, Jamie. You basically placed your life on hold to take care of not one, but both of your parents. You honored your mother and father, and for this, I applaud you. A couple weeks ago, our pastor in Kissimmee preached a sermon about a mother eagle. He said the single goal of this mother was to make sure that her kids could soar before she closed her eyes. And I would say that Mama did just that. Joni, Johnny, Larry, Mama loved you guys beyond words and did her best with the help that God gave her to prepare for you for things in life. El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. He is the God Almighty. Rest on him. Once again, we want to thank each and every one of you for being here today and just for being for, for this family. At the end of the burial, we'll have uh, refreshments back at the house. You're definitely welcome to come and join us. Thank you once again. Yeah. 
This was the funeral service of Philomen Hippolyte Louis of um, St. Joseph. This live was brought to you by Emo News. We will be back shortly at the burial ground using the burial link. The burial link was also posted in the chat. So we will, we will be back shortly using the burial link. Once again, thanks for viewing. Once again, we'll be back shortly at the burial ground using the burial link. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Yeah. 